have an empty trailer. Look at that. So this is one of those deliveries again that I had to be on the ball and sort of stay out of their way and get all my equipment off. And by the time I had gotten all my paperwork ready here in the truck, I look over, they already got them both off the trailer. So they used a boom truck to get it off. When they loaded it, they used a big crane, right? Well here they just used a simple boom truck with some slings. And it was more than twice as quick to get it hooked up. Didn't have to set up all the big crane and everything. It was actually very impressive. So, sorry I didn't get to show you the whole process of doing that, but it was a it was a busy rush kind of morning, and <laughs> now we're done already. So I've got a new load in Evansville, Wisconsin, south of here. I'm gonna go to the Quick Trip truck stop first, stop there, grab a coffee, uh, do some paperwork, send everything in, and then we'll be on our way. So let's get out of here. We're empty, gotta keep moving. I guess I don't need my traffic cone costume. How do I get out of here? I think what I've gotta do is I've gotta back up. There's like equipment all around me right now. Wait until things clear up a little bit. Shout out to Cody, who just came and stopped by and shook my hand. Been watching me for years apparently. We just happened to be at the same place at the same time. I told him I don't come through here very often. Wisconsin Rapids is sort of off the beaten path too. So usually I'd be going through on 94. What are the chances we both bump into each other at the exact same time at the exact same place, right? Where I'm not usually at. Made my day, Cody. Thanks for coming to say hi. Like I told him, it's always nice to put a face to the name on the screen, because you guys all know me very well, you know what I look like. I don't know you very well. It's always nice to meet you guys. If you do see me rolling around, don't be shy. Come and say hi. I am trying to get turned around here.
quick little chance to get to know one of my viewers just a little bit more, you know? It's kind of a one-sided thing we got going on here. You're watching me every day. I don't get to see you very much. That's okay. That's okay. Not everybody wants to be on YouTube, but it's always a treat when I get to meet you and shake your hand in person. Destination's on the left. See the parking in here. So I don't, I, I'm, I'm, wow, you're a, I'm turning. Take the next left. I'm turning. Yikes. See me? Get a spot. There always lots of spots. Lots. Plus, there's more across the street from what I read on the reviews. Your destination is on the right. No, it's not. It's on the left. You're drunk. So like I said, I don't need to fuel here. I'm just, I just need a place to park for, for a bit. Like gather myself, gather my thoughts, all my emotions. I'm just so happy to be trucking. <laughs> uh, okay, so we are at uh, quick trip number 202 in Plover, Wisconsin. Plover. And it looks like any other quick trip Quick Trip is, uh, are they based out of Wisconsin? They're primarily, from where I've seen them, I don't know anything about this really, but from what I've seen over the last like 13, 12, 13 years of me driving out here, is they're mostly in Wisconsin. But they're amazing. They're my favorite truck stops when I come out here. Always stopping on the Quick Trip. I don't know why they're not national yet, but they would really give the big guys like Pilot Flying J and TA Petro a run for their money if they could just expand out across the country and into Canada. If they brought Quick Trip across the border into Canada, like this is what these guys don't realize. These big CEOs, these big, uh, the big bosses of these big American truck stop chains, right? Pilot Flying J found a way to expand into Canada. So I've explained this before many times. This is why I, I go there often is because when I, sh when I, it's about shower credits and about point systems. So when I fuel at Flying J in the US, I can go into Canada, stop at a Flying J in Canada and use my shower credit from that fuel in Canada. Or I can fuel in Canada, use that shower credit or my points either way. I can use it on both sides of the border, which is super convenient for us Canadian drivers. So that's the only big American truck stop company that has expanded into Canada. So for Canadian drivers, Flying J is very popular. It changed the landscape of trucking in Canada when they came up. They came up with those big American dollars, right? There's a lot of money backing these American companies. They they have a lot of a huge customer base. They have 10 times the population down here. They got money and they rolled into Canada just, you know, with spinner rims and Cadillacs and tinted windows and not really, but my point is that they came up there with money and it showed. They opened up beautiful Pilot Flying J locations across the country in Canada, and they made them exactly like they are in the US. You got clean showers, nice, big, wide open, paved parking lots with lines for parking. Believe it or not, in some parts of Canada, that was a revolutionary thing. For us drivers, we go to the US, we knew that was a thing. We just wanted it to come to our side of the border too. Pilot Flying J brought that up there. And what happened was, there was a lot of the, there was Husky at the time in Canada, big truck stop chain across the country, Petrol Pass. Yeah, they are great, great places. I still stop there all the time. 
but they were deteriorating. Like they were going downhill, downhill. They weren't really taking care of their locations. A lot of their locations were gravel parking lots. Pilot Flying J jumps across the border with just throwing dollar bills all over the place. Suddenly it forced these Canadian chains to rethink their business strategies and become better. That free market competition really improved trucking in Canada. Cause now we got amazing brand new Petropass Canadian truck stops across the country with clean showers. We have uh, Esso and Husky that merged, sort of like Pilot, J, Pilot Flying J, they merged. And they've been redoing all of their locations, paving their lots. Like I'm talking from a Western Canadian perspective. Eastern Canada's always gotten all the good stuff. That's just how our country works. Eastern Canada gets everything nice. So they had paved parking. They had some nice truck stops. Out West, we were the Wild West. Gravel truck stops and dust. That's what we had. But anyway, my point is that if more of these American chains like Quick Trip, like uh, Petro TA, or any other ones, Loves, if they found a way to break into the Canadian market and start building truck stops across Canada, believe me, they're needed. They will have business. Doesn't matter how much you say, oh, it's oversaturated. No, it's not. There's like, for every 100 truck parking spots that are created in Canada, there's 200 more trucks that come onto the road. The, the country is growing exponentially. Trucking is growing exponentially. You build a good quality truck stop chain, like Loves, like uh, Quick Trip, like uh, TA, Petropath, anything like that. You, you buy line, you, you build those things in Canada. You will make money. You will be busy. I guarantee it. Just make sure that you build them in convenient locations that are close to the Trans Canada. Obviously, we're, they know this. They're marketing managers and these guys, they know this stuff. But seriously, if any of them happen to be watching my videos, just think about it. Think about it, maybe bring it up at your next board meeting or something. How did Pilot Flying J do it? They found a way to do it. You can do it too. We could use more truck stops, quality truck stops and clean showers and clean facilities, nice big paved parking lots in Canada. Specifically Western Canada, the prairies. Let's just throw that out there. Prairies, which is Manitoba, Saskatchewan, Alberta. There's money in it. Think about it. But then again, I am just a driver uh, and I am not actually in charge of these big multi-billion dollar corporations. I don't know how hard it is to open up a franchise in Canada. I really don't know how profitable it is, but from what I see, it has to be, it's gotta be profitable. It's worth looking into at least. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. Maybe that's why not more have moved up there. Maybe I'm wrong, but I mean, Pilot Flying J found a way to do it. So it is possible. What they did was they, I think they, uh, they merged with Shell because every pile of flying J in Canada is a Shell gas station. I don't know how they, uh, there's people that are uh, much more in tune with that side of business than me. I specialize in transport, tying down loads, securing loads, getting them from point A to point B on time and undamaged. That's what I do. That's my professional job. These guys who are working in these big, big high-end corner offices, they know this a lot better than me. All I'm asking is that you consider it. I'm gonna go inside there yet. Grab a coffee. I'm gonna send in some paperwork, we'll be on our way. Evansville, Wisconsin. I don't have a pickup time, it's a preloaded trailer. I can get there whenever and uh, tie it down and drag it on back. I just gotta see, because I think the load is going to Saskatchewan, so I've gotta call into the office uh, talk to the load gods. I'm pretty sure I'm taking it home, but I'm wondering if I'm staying on it. I might take it home, reset, and then continue on for a Monday delivery or something like that. I'm hoping that's what it'll be. Because I, I, if I pick up a load, I want to deliver it. Because that's my load. It's mine. I don't like bringing it and making someone else deliver it. It's, it makes me feel weird. And it's a pain for both drivers, too. Because us drivers, at least for me, I'm an owner up. So uh, I own the truck, I don't own the trailer. But I own all the equipment for securement. So when I secure a load, that's my equipment. So when I drop it in the yard for another driver, I take all my equipment off and I keep it with me. And he or she's gotta put all their equipment on the trailer, retie it down. It's just a big pain for me, big pain for them. I'd rather just deliver it and not have to worry about it, right? Sometimes we do leave our equipment on there for the next driver if it's just a short delivery. 
I've done that before, right? You uh, you take their equipment back to the yard, then give it back to them. That, that happens, but sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes your equipment disappears. <laughs> and it's expensive. It's very expensive. I also don't like other drivers securing my load for me. You know, I, I get it. Uh, sometimes drivers will walk over to me when I'm tying down a load somewhere just to give me a hand. Very often it's just a chit chat and that slows me down. Uh, like if they want to help me when help me tie down my load personally you know I would rather tie the whole load down myself I'll ask for help if I need it I'm not going to turn it down if someone starts if someone wants to come help. I don't want to be rude but personally in my head I would rather them not come over and help secure the load because I need to be able to know exactly how everything is secured how tight everything is that's my load, my responsibility going down the road, and I want to be the one that secures it. So that's another reason. I take my equipment off so that the next driver can secure it their way. If anything happens, then that's their securement. But I guess it's a case-by-case -case basis, too. I mean, if, some, if I know the guy and he wants to come help me, he's one of my friends, he wants to come help me tie down the load, I trust him. But if it's just a stranger walking across the parking lot, I know they're just trying to be nice. I don't want to be rude and say, get out of here! But, at the same time, I'm like, I don't know you. Why are you touching my stuff? <laughs> this break was a little longer than I had intended, but uh, it's okay. Got a coffee, had lunch, cleaned myself up a little bit, did paperwork, sent everything in, figured out where I was going, took a look at it on street view so I know how to get in there. Now we got about a two hour drive south, which is south of Madison, Wisconsin, to Evansville. It's getting closer to uh, the Ill Illinois border, I believe. Illinois, yeah. <clears throat> which way is out? Well, definitely not that way. Let's go this way. See, they got extra parking across the street over here. Though it does look like it's blindside parking on one side. That's unfortunate. Is what it is. At least there's parking. At 100 meters, turn left on WI 54 and then go straight at 180 meters. And then we're going to turn on to I 39. Still really liking these new headlights. Driving at night last night with these things, can't even compare them to my old lights. It's just incredible the difference. When I turn my high beams on, first of all, my old lights, only the inside lights were high beams, right? So on these new lights, just the outside ones are my low beams, but for high beams, all four of them phew, turn into high beams. So it's just super, super bright. I'd really like to get on the road here. My turn, my turn, right? My turn, you're turning, you're turning, I'm turning. Let's all turn together. Up and over the bridge and down the on-ramp. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, I hear that turbo. Ooh. Ooh. Yep. Quiet, Karen. I'm listening to my turbo. Oh, let's wind her up. You guys, ready? Let's open both sides so we can get it from both angles. Okay, here we go. All right, 39 south. Launch. <laughs> oh. That is a good sound in the morning. 
especially with a full stomach, full of chicken. Mm-hmm. Mmm. So I made it. I'm all dressed up, looking fancy. I got a super easy trailer. Look at this. That's my whole load. I think it's about 20,000 pounds. That, like, that's the whole thing. You got one more thing up there. Super simple. So it'll be like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One up here yet. Eight, nine. Eight to nine straps, tops. Quick, quick, quick. We'll see what it looks like once I kind of pull out of here. Dirty, dirty truck. Okay, let's do the walk around here. This little tiny guy in the front here. I got this steel all around here. Got some straps going over that way, some straps going over this way. Three over the top piece. Got it all tight. Everything here is this in here holding this all down. Everything is touching something. You know what I mean for load securement? Now this over here see this is flexing a bit but I put this strap over there to pull this down to put pressure on that which puts pressure on that which puts pressure on that which puts pressure on that and that's all stuck together there there we go all the way around I did the same thing on this side that is tight Push on that 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 Get out of here. Leaving Evansville. On the road home. This is a surprisingly small and light load. I am not complaining. spot it took me a little while I actually parked in a spot over there at first and then I moved over here and I parked over here I like this better but when I came out and checked my work I was crooked so I had to pull forward and straighten out That's where we're at for tonight the Olsen truck stop I believe the town's called Monticello. 
Minnesota. These lights are so bright. It's just the running lights. Yeah, it's been a good day. A little bit of a muddy law, but that's okay. We'll sleep just fine here, nice and quiet, tucked away in the back. Straight exit right out the driveway here, right into the middle. And if we're lucky, no one will come and park beside us.